What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 41 of the College Loop Podcast. Tar is able to put up his numbers again. That was actually 14 is what the viewers are going to see there. <laughs> episode 41, uh, Tar and Daniel are back as my co-hosts, as always. But the star of the show is neither one of those two. It's Brooks Walton returning uh, to the show yet again. Former walk-on at Auburn University, and he is back to talk more Auburn football with us today. Former Auburn walk-on linebacker and current college loop football analyst, Brooks Walton. There we go. New job title every day. I'm <laughs> glad to be back with you guys. Thanks. Throw, throw that bad boy on your LinkedIn, why don't you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Brooks, thanks for joining us today, man. We've got a, we got a lot of spring ball. We, we knew we were going to bring you back for the end of spring ball because uh, we, you, you really provide some great insight uh, as to what it's like to really go through getting knocked around in, in the spring. And, and, what we want to talk about th- this episode is, is is the title of this one is is can Holden Jariner win the Auburn quarterback battle, and and yeah. you don't you don't have to chime you can chime in if you want, dude. Hell, I don't care. But uh, I'm I'm all I'm all for that. But what we want to talk to you is about you got to watch a I imagine a handful of of position battles front row. How intense does that get? It just kind of it all depends on the people that are in it. You know, <clears throat> I mean everybody that if you make it to the level that Auburn's at, like you, you are a competitive person regardless. So everybody's competing for their spot. Some people just show it differently. Some people are really, really quiet about it and will just be, you know, keep quiet and do their work and show that they perform here and kind of, you know, like they say, let the film do the talking and other people, you know, will be loud about it. If they make a play, they make a good throw, knock down a ball or something big, they'll let you know and they'll run up to their position coach and be like, you know, super excited. Make sure you saw that put that one down in the film like just kind of depends on the person so it's pretty cool to watch the different ones go out pretty big one going on like we said on the plans but there's a handful it's not just quarterback Dylan, you have it you, you wanted to or i guess maybe oh, yeah. daniel i i got one because uh you know walk on linebackers so you got to be a little bit more uh you got put a little bit more attention on the position that you played so linebacker is a big question mark going into 2023 you got demario tolan coming in austin keys coming in you have cam riley and wesley steiner returning Eugene Asante, all competing for those starting minutes because, you know, oh, and Papo's gone. Uh, that was your mm-hmm. starter from day one. As soon as he entered the Holy Gates of Auburn, he was the starting linebacker. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on the current linebacker room? You know, uh, you know, without Papo, maybe uh, what does the room look like? You know, it's cool. It's always good to bring new people in because you never know who's going to really be able to fit, who's going to be able to, kind of jump in and do something immediately. But it's also good to – it's really, really nice to have Cam and Wesley still here because, I mean, those guys have been around for, I mean, a while now. Like, they're you know, they came in younger than me, so I still think of them as pretty young. But I mean, these, these dudes are old college football players now, and they've been in the system. They've been with different coaches. And so, like, they know – I mean, a big part of it is they're just comfortable at Auburn, and they know what they're doing. They know where practice is at, and they know the teammates. And so – it's really good to have those dudes around. Uh, um, I mean, I can't speak for the past year, obviously, because I wasn't with them. But, I mean, both of them were just really, really good at absorbing everything that the coaches were trying to say. And that's the number one thing. Like, you could you could run through a brick wall, but if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going, this is a high enough level where the coaches won't play you. And so that's the number one thing. And they've automatically got to step up on anybody that comes in on that aspect. Now, again, anybody that transfers in, like, or comes in, they know football to an extent. And so it's not going to be a huge learning curve, probably, to come in. And so that's why you see people come in and are able to make big-time uh, contributions super soon, just because football is football, and some people are just real smart at it and pick it up. So, I mean, it's just cool because everybody's going to be – I think that is one of those positions where it's going to be wide open. And coaches always say every position is wide open. Sometimes it's not, and everybody kind of knows it. Uh, but I do think that could be one of the ones where it's just anybody's game, and people are really going to need to show out in the spring. Daniel, before you jump in, I don't want to cut you off too quick, but I do want to build off the linebacker question here for a second, Brooks. For what what does it take to win? Uh, obviously, you show out, and you're better than, than the guys above below you, or you work harder. I get that. But what does it look like for a guy to win uh, a, a position battle at linebacker? I mean, is is it is it more being able to do the technical things right? Is it being coachable? Is it is is it a mixture of everything? Man, yeah, it's a mixture of everything. Um, again, if you're lost out there, 
you won't play. That's kind of the bottom line. The coaches won't put out anybody that, that, you know, fills in a wrong gap consistently. And I mean, that's, they will point it out. They will let you, not they won't let you, but they'll watch you do it wrong every single play, all practice wrong, all practice long. And then you get in a film and they'll call you out for it every single time you do it. And so like, they're not letting you get away with anything. And if the coaches just consistently see you make the same mistake, because that's what they, that's what they really get mad about. So in spring ball, you know, you, you install your first couple of base plays your first time you go out there, you know, maybe a, a cover three and one other, you know, one high look. And that's what you've got that day. And you're running just those. And then the next day you build. So you have those, you throw in one or two more and then one or two more. And so if they see you consistently making the same mistakes on the day one install, that's when you really kind of start to set yourself behind because they're, they're not seeing any growth. They always tell us like they expect you to make, to make mistakes on the new stuff and they expect you to really know the old stuff. And if you don't, that's where you can kind of lose it. I, that makes perfect sense. It's it's like learning uh learning anything in any course ever. It's the same concept. Yeah. Daniel, go ahead. So about if you have any idea about how many of the new guys do you think are going to be playing? Oh man, that's tough. Uh it just kind of all depends. I think a lot of it'll depend on just how oh I mean, I guess everybody's pretty new to it because mm-hmm. Coach Freeze is new there. So kind of if you look at it that way, everybody's new to Coach Freeze, and he's the one making the decisions. And so, uh, yeah, that's a tough one, and it'll just kind of come down to who can who can pick it up the fastest, honestly. And and there is something to be said for kind of everybody understands that if it's close, a lot of the times experience will it doesn't trump other things, but it, that's definitely something people can look at as kind of an intangible. And well, you know, older he gets, it he's played ball lots. It's just a tough question, man. I wish I could get an answer for you, but it'll just be cool because everybody's in the same boat right now, and I think that's a good spot to be in. I I think that was a fine answer, in, in my opinion. I think that makes perfect sense. You have any from from your time playing? You have any specific uh, position battles that you watched play out that really kind of stuck out uh, out to you? I mean, you would have had to have been there for the the hypothetical uh, Nick's Gatewood uh, ex- exper- experiment. So, uh, any, any any what what all stuck out to you? Uh, stuck out to you? That was that was an interesting one. So that was right when I, I was still kind of getting familiar with my way around it because I'd started in the spring of 2019. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I knew Joey a little bit. I'd seen him around, and then Bo comes in, and everybody, you know, it was Bo and Owen that came in together, and they were the two guys. There were a bunch of other people who came in too at the same time, but those were the, the top dudes. Both wore number ten. Like that was them together, and uh, you know, it was just. I didn't really have a, uh, a dog in the fight for that. A lot of people kind of might have had a more personal connection to Joey beforehand, but I don't know. Did, um, Bo came in. I mean, he showed out for sure. He came in and made a couple plays, and there was one play kind of one of the first days we were in full pass. He pulled a ball in his own read and kind of took off around the edge and pump faked the guy and just kind of kept going. And But he looked around like, man, this dude, this dude's like, he had the athleticism right from the jump and everybody knew it. And uh, it's, I don't know if the coaches actually feel it, but I mean, fans and people that just watch football, you feel kind of the pressure to, you've got this five-star kid that came in and everybody wants to see him. And I'm not saying saying the coaches were, I don't know, because, you know, if you've been coaching 30 years, you can probably take a lot of that and not care about it. Sure. Uh, but that was kind of the feel around there. Everybody whether it was based in, in anything tangible or not, everybody kind of felt like Bo might get the chance just because he was Bo Nix and he was his big time recruit coming in. Um, yeah, that was an interesting one. And then uh, shoot, I mean, just the, the linebacker battles that I got to see between um, a lot of those guys. I mean, you know, Jacoby and Owen, they had their spot for sure. And they knew what they were doing. And Chandler Wooten took that one year off the COVID year when he had his baby and, all that, that and so he came back and he can't he was just a super veteran guy and knew what the heck he was doing so he was a really good guy to be able to plug in and we had the three of them rotating and then bringing in you know cam brown desmond tisdall and cam riley like to watch all three of them they're all three super different types of football players and so it was really neat to see them like uh you know cam riley's got he's six three six four super long arms 
Like he's just built like that. And Desmond and Cam are not built that same way, but they would just play different. And it was really cool because, you know, each one of them had different things that they would be really good at in practice. And other ones would have different things that, you know, it was just different types of ball players playing different ways. And that was one that, I mean, all three of them were just kind of bumping back and forth depending on the day. So those are, those are the times where I'm not jealous of coaches who have to try to pick who's going to take what spot because that's, I mean, it's, it's going to cause problems either way. Sure. That's uh, I, I would imagine as coaches, Dill, uh, I know you had something that you got that you got to follow up here, but I'd imagine that's the kind of core, uh, not quarterback, but position battle you're looking for. Unlike what's going on in the quarterback position right now, I think that's what you're not looking for as a, as, as a, as a coach. Dylan, I'll let you go ahead with your, your follow-up question there. Yeah, so you brought up the fact that you experienced the Bo Nix versus uh, Joey Gatewood quarterback battle. And now uh, this offseason, all these players are having to witness the Joey, uh, not Joey Gatewood, TJ Finley versus Robbie Ashford versus Holden Jariner and a potential transfer coming in uh, that we suspect to come in sometime after A days over with. Is it hard as a as a non quarterback to get lost in the distractions of the off season quarterback battles? Like you see it everywhere on Twitter, everywhere on social media, and is is it hard to just get your mind focused back on, hey, we're trying to get better. Hey, we're trying to get right for the season. I think it can be for some people, but also a lot of the times, like a lot of the times, you have your own opinion on who you think it is, and you just kind of run with that and whatever the media says or whatever it seems like it's looking like people are like, cool, that's great. You know, I've seen, I've seen Robbie do do this in practice and I've seen Robbie excel at this point, or I've seen TJ do this and he's better at this. And so it's just kind of a different perspective. And also a lot of the times like uh, guys can't really focus on that a ton because you're trying to win your own position battle, you know? So Sometimes guys are able to just kind of push all that to the side and say, you know, they'll figure it out. Coach Freeze will pick who it is and whoever it is, we run with it. And uh, some guys might favor one player or another and get caused some problems. But, you know, ultimately, like, you just – you need to – that's just part of it, you know. And especially at a school like Auburn, there's there's going to be media scrutiny on everything. We could win the national championship the next three years and in an off season they'll be talking about – you know, oh, is so and so good enough to play here? Do we need to bring in a transfer for the spot? So like, it just happens that way, and uh, it's not a bad thing. Like everybody loves to have a spotlight on them, and especially with those dudes being quarterbacks, like they've grown up with it. And uh, you know, I'm I'm sure they're all they like being able to show off and show out, and uh, all like I said, like everybody's a competitor, and everybody knows how to compete, and they want to. Like they they wouldn't have made it to Auburn if they weren't. Daniel, before I know you, I know you're you're about to hop back in, Daniel. But before you do, I'm going to see how much coach speak Brooks is going to give us today, or if he's going to be analytic, uh, Brooks. We're, we're, we're about to we're about to find out. <laughs> we're about to find out if this is analyst Brooks Walton or uh, Auburn football ambassador Brooks Walton. There is inherently a young man that's in this quarterback conversation right now. That damn it, none of us thought it would be. A lot of us thought he wouldn't be with the program right now, and. I correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you shared the locker room with him one year by the name of yeah. TJ Finley. Yep. There are a lot of, of, of upsides and downsides to every single one of these guys. And, 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 and a lot of people are curious about TJ's commitment uh, to, to Auburn in terms of, is, is he going through the motions right now? Um, is he serious about wanting to stay and compete for this job in the fall, which by the way, I think is a non-zero chance fellas. I, I really do. And, and we've talked about that as of late, Brooks. We've talked about that a lot on the show. TJ Finley's not been on my bingo card to talk about, but here we are. Is there, in your experience, is is there any validity to people saying, you know, TJ's just going through the motions right now. He's not committed to to, to trying to win this job here at Auburn. This is this is all about him. I'm, I'm, I'm just putting you on the spot here. We're about to find out. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, you could definitely say that at some point, but I think the fact that he stayed, you know, I, I, I think at this point he's like, man, I got another coach coming in. I got another dude that I, that can evaluate me, and then I can start fresh with. I do. I think because I, I I thought there was a good chance he was going to take off, um, just because the way things were looking, you know. And Robbie played a whole lot more down the stretch, and you know TJ can play at other schools for sure. Not to say he can't play at Auburn too, but I, yeah, I think the fact that Coach Freeze came in 
and that he's still here and that he's still working hard. And I think he's kind of bought in completely and is probably because I mean, he, he's a competitive kid for sure. Like he's one of those guys that came in fiery, made friends quick, loves to be out there, loves to let everybody know when he threw a good ball, which is fine. Quarterbacks need to be confident. But, yeah, I think he's gotten to that point where he's just like, man, Coach Freeze didn't know Robbie any more than he knew me. He didn't know Holden any more than he knew me when he came in. So I think he's I think he's probably all in for sure. That was analyst Brooks Walton, folks. That was analyst Brooks Walton. There you, Walton. Go. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. I like analyst Brooks. This is uh, We need to make this a regular, regular segment, Dylan. Daniel, I know I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm done talking. No, you're fine. You know, you actually asked my questions. So, um, did I actually? To rack my mind. <laughs> you did. No worries. I'm trying to rack my mind for another one here. Um, I'll throw it back to Dill if you, if you what need What can you space. tell me about the team? I got gotcha. you. Sorry, what? Okay. What can you tell me, if anything, about the DV room? Mm, man, uh, you know, there's a lot of turnover that I don't know as many of them personally anymore. But, uh, man, I, I I do know that the type of guys that we get, I don't know what it is about Auburn, but we always get just absolute – we get athletic freaks back there. And the, I always loved watching the DBs do their thing because those guys were able to just jump out of the gym and do absolutely whatever they wanted to on the field. So that was really cool. Uh, you know, I mean, like Auburn's kind of known historically you got to be tough playing hard defense, you know, we went away from that for a while before I got to Auburn and it was cool to kind of see it all come back. And I don't know, unless I see something that were actually make me worry as of right now, just knowing the type of guys we get and the type of guys we still have, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Auburn's just notoriously good at pulling in absolute dogs in that, in that, in that DB room. It's, it's nuts. And this group of DBs is so deep. It's unbelievable. Like the, <laughs> the the quick turnover from Hugh Freeze got, got me giggly, man. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Dylan? Uh, this, let's, this is a not so serious question. So going through spring drills, what was your favorite drill that you look forward to? Oh, man. Uh, Taking the pads off. <laughs> that is that's a drill a dang, sometimes. That's a dang good one at the end of the day. <laughs> You know, there's just um, – that's a good question. Sometimes we would run uh, – this one kind of sucks, but it was kind of fun because it was all just backyard football. We'd run scramble drill. So, no O-line, no D-line, but basically seven on seven. But, you know, the quarterback's not allowed to throw the ball until after five seconds, after he's scrambled around a bunch. So, I mean, it was like conditioning for us. Um, everybody's just – you know, you've got to find a guy. You stick to him. You run from one side of the field to the other. you got to switch your – head between quarterback and who's behind you and whatnot but that was cool because it was it was like backyard football again you know uh you didn't have a five second rush but you had people just kind of running around and quarterbacks kind of flinging it wherever they could that was always fun that always got people going uh this wasn't just a spring drill but seven on seven always uh got super competitive you know technically seven on seven is a drill but when they've got they play it all through the summer like I played in a ton of seven on seven tournaments and it's just, it's a competition at this point. And uh, more in the summertime at Auburn than uh, in the spring, but in the summertime, like during voluntary practices and stuff, you know, the coaches can't be out there. So it's all called by, um, called by the defense, defensive players called by the quarterbacks. And those are fun because it just gets to be a competition and it's just a game and, you know, everybody's playing football. And those are, those are, those are good times because, it's kind of a cool break in the day where everybody's working hard, but you're not just having to hit pads. You're not just having to run the same play over and over. Uh, you're actually working and you're learning new stuff, but you're getting to you're going to play football. You're getting to compete. So that was the most fun we probably all had was all during seven on seven. Backyard ball, love it. All right, I've got one last question before we 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 let we let analyst Brooks Walton uh, cut loose and putting you on the spot. <laughs> Just to keep keep with the continuity, I know I've asked a lot of quarterback questions. It's kind of the theme of the episode today with the with the news breaking that Hugh Freeze is quote impressed by Holden Jariner. I take everything he says with a grain of salt. I think he may have a little Gus Malzahn BS isms in him. But who is going to be taking snaps, starting snaps for the Auburn Tigers come opening uh opening weekend in, in 2023? Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. Um shoot, man. 
That's tough. Uh, I think – I said this last year. I think if Robin can kind of tone in the arm a little bit and figure it out, having that kind of other aspect of him running around and, and being a fantastic runner, I don't I don't know how all that's looking. I can't see the practices. I can't see how his arm's looking. But if he can figure that out, I think he could be the guy. And, yeah, I don't know. I'd love to see it because we saw kind of flashes of what it could look like towards the end of last year. Sure. And, yeah, it could be one of those things that turns out to be a massive, massive jump for Auburn off off football. So, love to see it. Maybe that's just a little bit of wishful thinking, but I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah, Dylan, no wonder we keep inviting him back on the show. One of us. <laughs> one of us. We are a Robbie uh, Ashford supporting podcast. Yes, we are 100% in Robbie Ashford um, stand account uh, over here at the College Loop. The I, I do fear to inform you, though, I do not think the starting quarterback is on the roster right now. That's just uh, – I think that may be the harsh truth of the matter. That being said, Brooks, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Always a blast to talk ball with you. And like I said, we, we keep saying we need to make this thing a routine thing. And damn it, we're going to. Uh, we, we always enjoy having you on the show, man. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate that. Guys. I love this. This is great. All right. Thank you to Brooks. Walton, we're going to send it back to ourselves, Dylan. And let's talk a little more ball. Yes. Big thank you to known college loop analyst, Brooks Walton, former Auburn Football linebacker, always a ton of fun to talk to him. Looking forward to talking to him next Tuesday. Going to try this out, see if, how you guys like little Brooksy Mondays, uh, Brooksy Tuesdays, rather. We got to come up with something clever like that and uh, and and figure out what he's cool with or if, whatever you guys are cool with, whatever. Drop it in the comments on the face uh, on the, on the, I almost said Facebook. Well, I, I, got one. I got it. Bruise what? day. Bruise day. I like Bruise it. Bruise day. And he's got a really, really fun story for you guys next week. So you definitely want to listen to the Tuesday episode. Very excited about that. Let's get back into football for just a second before we keep moving forward. We mentioned and when we we talked about holding Jariner and and he took reps with the ones on Monday, guys, or yesterday as the show's coming out. So it looks like Holden Jariner is is very much a serious contender to win this starting quarterback job at Auburn, barring a transfer and barring a number of things. And really, who really knows? But Hugh Freeze did say he was impressed with with Holden Jariner pretty shortly. Uh, it was pretty brief. And, and, and when he was asked about guys he was impressed with on Monday afternoon. And like I said, he did take reps with the ones. Dylan, how do you what do you what do you make of this? How do you how do you make heads or tails here? I'm gonna, and Daniel, go ahead and get prepped because I'm about to ask you the same question. Uh, well, I'm not. This is coming a week after he just went on a spiel about how none of the quarterbacks were really all that impressive, how he wasn't impressed with how they were performing thus far. It's not exactly what he said, but that's I, I'm translating coach speak. Sure. Uh, it's very easy to do that whenever you ask a question and they're not very specific on uh, any pros, but they sound like they're going a little ham on the cons behind the scenes. Sure. <laughs> that's what it seemed like. Uh, I asked Holden finally woke up and learned the playbook. Uh, and you got to think this is uh, going on his uh, his second season, uh, second season, quote unquote, because he wasn't red shirt and he's already in a second playbook. So it's going to take a little bit of a, a, a little while. And you got to think Robbie Ashford is also going on his third playbook in same seasons. Uh, hopefully with Hugh Freeze, we see a little, little bit more stability with that. Uh, the Gus Malzahn slash uh, Brian Harson era did not really help with that case. But if if Jariner can prove himself as uh, the quarterback for go, going in the next year, I'd find it very shocking uh, to see him as a starting quarterback. I, I still think Robbie is probably the QB one as of now. Uh, sure. Post April eighth, that could very well change. Uh, but right now, I, I I think it's just a quarterback popping off on a week. We see it year in year out. One quarterback just has a good week. Sure, Daniel. Same question to you, my man. How do you, what do you make yeah. of this? Um, <clears throat> I feel like quarterback more than a lot of other positions is just kind of streaky. Um, you know, like you get hot, you cool off one day or week, you're hitting your throws, you know, the other you're not. And we kind of saw this like last year in spring training, like, um, weeks like, like spring training is where pocket passers tend to shine. Sure. Since there's not really anyone, you know, running after him but you know like tj's just the, a statue in the pocket you know he can't get out if need be um so you know maybe with the improved o-line if he has some time to throw and like kind of same with holden i, I know this is mainly holden based because you know that's what um no i think Hol- I, I think tj's about. part of the conversation for sure well, for sure yeah yeah sure um so yeah they're just kind of i don't really think it's sort of like 
the same way they do pro days, like like Greg McElroy said, it's like you're scouting a PGA guy on the range. Like you just don't really get the full picture. So, I mean, yeah, like that that's good. He's hitting his stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not really impressed. Well, uh, that's getting clipped. I, I just it's not really the end all be all for me. You're so intuitive, Daniel. You're so intuitive. <laughs> so intuitive. Just to get by two cents worth that nobody asked for him. Uh I think that hold Jerry is a serious factor in 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 this quarterback battle. And and I'll be honest with you, I think all three of them are. And there's a lot of lot of layers that go into this. And, and ultimately, if Hugh Freeze can get his guy out of the portal, I think there's your answer. And and it may not even be a guy that, to be quite frank with you, with you fellas, uh, that that it, it's could be a guy that doesn't blow us away. And and that's okay. It, it really boils down to the fact that in in Hugh, I guess the, the mantra this year for Auburn fans has got to be in Hugh we trust because you, you, his track record precedes him. That being said, if Holden Jariner doesn't win the spot this year, I've got a hard time seeing him on the roster in 2024. And I know that's getting clipped too. That's okay. Um, and I, I'll go on the record and say that pretty much anywhere you want me to. I've said it here. I've said it on the Auburn Daily Show. I'll say it from the rooftops if you need me to. It gets cloudy going forward if Holden Jariner doesn't win this spot. And you you have Walker White, your quarterback of the future. That he's the guy going forward. And and there's another guy looming in this locker room that clearly thinks that he can be there if he deserves to be there and has a shot. If otherwise he wouldn't have committed. Hank Brown that, that, we, that we mentioned earlier. And, and and I'm not entirely sure how all these I'm super high on Hank Brown. I'm not, but uh, <laughs> that's that's oh. not because I don't think the kid can play ball. It's just I don't know how he doesn't get trapped in the depth chart you know what i mean yeah uh i think that that could be a depth chart trap for him i think holden jariner has as good of a shot here, here here's here's your quote dylan i'll let you go ahead and bookmark this one i think holden jariner has as good of a shot to win the starting quarterback job as anybody on that in that quarterback room right now oh yeah just just because like brooks said but, they're all on a level playing field in theory with uh, with hugh freeze so that's that's kind of where I'm at there. Let's let's keep moving on football. Fat Cruton. And you think I'm calling people overweight. I'm not. I'm talking about Jamarion Burnett being him and already going after people on Twitter. And, and it's worth talking about because we thought Walker White was going to be like the yeah, – he still is. Don't get me wrong. Walker White is the lead of this charge. And, and, and that's a guy that I'm excited to talk to Brooks about because apparently he's like a, a Walker White guru, which is awesome. <laughs> and I'm excited to talk about that. Uh, but – He's Fat trying, to my, trying to take my job. I, yeah, no kidding, bro. Like, what the heck is up with that? <laughs> we, he got he took the analyst tag a little too seriously, man. But <laughs> he tweeted at four star offensive tackle Jaquan uh, Jaquan McCroy. I, I want to make I'm 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 assuming I'm saying this correct. If I'm saying it incorrectly, by all means, please someone um, let me know how to say. Oh, that. if you if you if you mispronounce Jaquan McCroy, I'm gonna come at you. He's already my favorite guy we're going after in class 24 i i yes and that's that's why i'm putting the ball on the tee here for you yes he six eight <laughs> i'm throwing you a little bit of a lob pretty cool to see the fat is kind of joining in on the okay you're on the plane you're talking about going to the planes you visited visited the planes you're coming i'm making up your mind for you talk to me for a second here dylan about who jaquan mccoy mccoy is and and let's let's just run this down daniel i, I want to hear it again because it's just more and more beautiful every time it comes out of, out of somebody's mouth about <laughs> how big this guy is and what he brings to the football field. So if you're unaware of who Jaquan McCrory is, he is a four star offensive tackle. Uh, he goes, he plays at clay chalkville high school in Pinson, Alabama. He is right now the 134th ranked offensive tackle the, or player. There we go. Fifth tackle in his class, eighth player in the state of Alabama. Now here's, here's the catcher. He is six feet, eight inches tall. And 365 pounderoos. Dude That's a big is boy. He is massive. Not as big as me. <laughs> okay. I, we're, we're talking like Prince Tego Wango big here. And Prince Tego is an edge rusher. This you guy is. What? I was waiting for you to say something. <laughs> Whatever. We're talking to a guy who's that big playing offensive tackle. This is a level of recruit we have not seen uh, ever. Ever. Okay. Uh, what? I believe you're listening. <laughs> trying to trying to 
Paul, the, I had to sit through the Gus Malzahn tenure where our best off of the tackle we had was an edge rusher. And I Hey, still, don't hate on don't hate on James Kristoff from Madison, Connecticut. You were naming people that I don't even know, and I've been a fan since birth. This is, this is incredible. But yeah, I, I college loop off the rails. <laughs> But what Fat's doing is outstanding. Uh, uh, Walker White's also adding uh, Jaquan McCroy. Uh, they, whenever you're a quarterback and you have the ability to recruit your own offensive lineman, going for the six foot eight, three hundred sixty five pound guy is a pretty good idea from Walker White's perspective and from Fat's perspective, because you're going to be running to whatever side he is on, and you're going to be hoping and praying that that side also doesn't get bull rushed by an edge rusher in the SEC. And when you have a guy who is that big, and let me just go ahead and point this out for a second. He is a junior in high school. A Don't junior a right now. in high school. That, uh, I His diet. I got to know what his mom is, is cooking him because, oh, my Lord. <laughs> Uh, but this is the this is the new era of college football. Uh, your your coaching staff is no longer the main recruiters. We've seen the past few years uh, where uh, players have just kind of stood out and beyond. We saw it with uh, Braden Joyner. We saw it with Jeremiah Cobb in class twenty two, that or in class twenty three. Sorry, uh, we just saw these players just come out on Twitter, on social medias, got their numbers, uh, t- and was just talking. Hey, hey. I'm going to Auburn. You know, it'd be fun if you came with me. Hey, hey, other five star. Uh, I know you're committed to Alabama, but I said it last show. Who wants to live in Tuscaloosa? Exactly. <laughs> but the real thing is, why go to Alabama where you're going to be joined by three other four stars at your same position or five stars when you can be a more important piece at a team? Who has difference. the talent, has the coaches, can make a difference and get and, and build up a program that has not seen the best success over the past four or five years uh, since 2017, really. 2019 is arguable uh, just because we beat Alabama that year. But you look at it from Auburn's always right there with Bama and Georgia. And we're here, you is here to make a difference, to take down the Goliaths. Goliath on east and the west of Auburn. Sure. And you love to see it, especially yeah. when it's a six foot eight guy. Who's you really do. Cruton with fat. I really want that to be a thing. Moving forward, let's go give a little update on our NCAA March Madness bracket challenge for the college loop. We have a solo leader right now, Mr. Ethan Hemker, a good buddy of ours. Ethan did pick Alabama to win the, the national championship. He has no points remaining, so unlikely that he winds up winning. We've got a couple names that I'm going to throw out there. Matthew Shannon picked Houston. He's at 63. He's locked in. He can't win this bracket, but an honorable mention, great, great effort on his part. And I believe the third place team whose champions also eliminated, but has 16 points remaining is Caroline Connor. So I would like to like to give a shout out to all three of you guys. Katie Blake, you, you made a good run there. You had a good run until your Zags let you down. And uh, there's still 16 points remaining there for Caroline Connor. So she is the clear favorite, a sneaky pick that could sneak up and win this thing, guys. Zachary Card, he's going to need it to be damn near perfect. But Zach Card, you could, friend of the program, by the way, could could see himself sneak back in there, win the four tickets to A-Day and a pretty bad bleep Auburn hat. <laughs> so let's keep moving forward. Let's talk a little Auburn baseball. And it is Daniel Locke's time to shine. Daniel, who's on the bump tomorrow with a, with a matchup for UNA? If you don't know for sure, who do you want to see on the bump tomorrow? What's Auburn's outlook? And, uh, yeah, like, give, give, me, give me the full rundown. I want the spiel. Sure. So, first of all, you guys know me. Always going to plug myself. I'll be covering yes. this one on behalf of the Auburn Plainsman. So, follow me on Twitter at Daniel J. Locke, and I will have all your first alert updates. Uh, turn my post notifications on. I've always wanted to say that. Um <laughs> Uh, okay, so I don't know who's going to pitch. I don't think uh, Butch does either. Uh, <laughs> I want to see Herbert Halls. Sure. Um, he came in garbage or not garbage time. It was still meaningful when he came in on um Saturday. He's not the one who blew it though. Um, I would like to see more of him because it's just UNA. No need to throw Vale. Um, no need to throw Sheehan. Just throw 
Herbert Halls for as go long as ball. he can get out there. Go out there, play ball, get runs early. And here's my big thing, fellas. Yeah, please just, get I, runs early. I just don't want to see all no, no being no hit through four innings. No more of that. Get that bug out of your system. Another thing, fellas, I don't want to see Auburn strand runners on the bases. If you get runners in scoring position, no. I want to see you convert. I, I'm not even going to be unrealistic here and say more than you don't, but I want to see you push runs across in a manner that in any situation where you have a, run, a runner in threat threatening to score, you are liable that people have to take you serious. And and not one of those, well, Auburn's going to leave the bases loaded yet again. Auburn's going to leave one on, two on, whatever. Don't leave your bases, uh, don't, don't leave runners stranded and 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 have controlled plate appearances. Don't go up to the plate looking like you're trying to kill the first pitch every single time unless your name is one of three guys. Do with that information as you will. Uh, <laughs> that's That's kind of my outlook. Dylan, what do you want to see out of this team in terms of progression? I know that we're going to be clearing this, uh, clearing our schedule. I'll be definitely watching uh, tonight as the show's coming out at six, uh, 6 p.m. Central on SC Network Plus. For those of you curious where the programming is, where what do you want to see out of Auburn tonight uh, in terms of just progression to make sure that they they can be that team that is barely left out of the coaches' top 25 this week, by the way? Yeah, we're right on the cusp of being back in the top 25 uh, that we were we were in at one point or what we, were, what we weren't in. Auburn has been flirting with it for the entirety of the year. Yeah, uh, there's like 17 different baseball rankings, so I never <laughs> know which ranking to use or to look at. Send it with softball. Release the Lark rankings. Why not? Yeah, that that's gonna. It'd be work so out nice well. and easy if the college football playoff just put out a baseball poll as well. That just make life so much easier for. I everybody. know, right? Would it? <laughs> I'm future thing, future note for me. I might start doing rankings, uh, top 25 rankings for the show, but. What I'm looking forward to is, you know, more consistent offensively. Uh, yeah, you're going to get the pitching staff. Uh, you're going to throw people out there. Uh, let's not give up uh, hopefully more than one run. Uh, but uh, let's shoot for less than uh, 10 this time sure. around. Because <laughs> you're not going to throw in your, your best arms. You're going to throw in the probably some of the guys. Oh, that were tomorrow, playing. less than five, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, just don't give up runs. Uh, get runs. Uh, win the game. Oh, so score more than your opponent. That's the your exactly. expert That's... analysis from Dylan Lark. Dylan, quick question for you before we uh, before we get this either show continued or show on the road. Uh, has softball gone final yet? Uh, they are in the bottom of the seventh. Bree Ellis is at bat. Uh, there is one out, and there is. Abby Smith on first base. So the winning okay. the winning run is on base. So as we're recording this, let's go ahead and give our reactions to this weekend series win. We, we talked about it a little bit on the Sunday show. And, and if Auburn is to walk this one off or go into extras, so be it. We'll tweet it out and Dylan will have the final because he's a G and a legend. Daniel, I want to get your thoughts since you were uh, unable to join us on the Sunday show. Life happens. I get it. It's completely cool. Yeah. But well, a much needed series, SEC series win and, and bounce back series win. For Auburn softball, where's your head at right now? Is this is the train back on the rails, or are they in good shape? Um, yeah, I, I think the train's back on the rails. Um, a get right, or I think they're going to win tonight. I hope. I haven't looked at a score of either of you. That's one one. One one. Okay. Bottom seventh. One out. So Dylan's clearly watching it right now. So okay. Well, hopefully if they pull it off. Then you have a get right game. Well, kind of a get right game, but. A tough challenge on a Wednesday against the Sanford Bulldogs up in Birmingham. Excuse me. Right. Then a very tough weekend against the Ole Miss Rebels. So if Auburn can win tonight, beat Sanford on Wednesday, and then take two out of three against the Rebels this weekend, I think they're in good shape for now. That's the most successful nine, ten days of the season to this point, if that's, if that's something you can accomplish. Because sure. your schedule from there, man, I'll go ahead and say it's hellacious. Three against Florida. One uh, midweek against Troy, three against LSU, one uh, midweek against Jacksonville State, three against Bama, three against South Carolina, and then you round out your SEC slate with three against Mississippi State. Guys, it doesn't get a whole lot harder than that. It's uh -oh. brutal. Briellis yes, Ellis single. Now Abby and Bree are on uh, first and second. I feel like I'm listening to uh, part of my take where they're watching a game live while they also have to be filming. 
I've I've been there. Something well, it's, that, it's bottom of the seventh. I mean, it's kind of hard not to do that. <laughs> no, I get it. I, but I, I actually had something else I wanted to add real quick. If if you combine the one run that's been given up, knock on wood thus far, and and tonight's nights tonight's game, Auburn has given up a combined two runs over three games. And wow, did Daniel did they need that? Uh, the pitching needed an opportunity to feel confident. Missouri sucks. Let's call a spade a spade. Uh, they're they're not good, but you needed to knock around an SEC opponent. And be like, hey, we can be right there. Dylan, you look like you had something to jump in there. I will say this isn't a very important single from Bree Ellis because this ends her four game or her three game hitless streak that she was under. It was either three or if it was four, or if it, this was either three going on four or if it was just four in general. Uh, but yeah, a uh, huge single for Bree Ellis right there. Bad day to be a softball if you're if you're hitting against Briellis. Daniel, ta- I was I was talking for a second there about the Auburn's uh, p- pitching dominance this weekend. I, I, your your thoughts here on seeing Maddie Pinter get back in the win column? I mean, she had a rough little stretch out there in, in Oklahoma, and 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 your thoughts on on this group being able to regain confidence before you get into that tough slate? Right, it's crucial. Um, who doesn't struggle against Oklahoma? It happens. Um, went out there and got hit around pretty good. Whatever happened, move on. And it looks like she's doing that. So that statement not really bad. Hurts. One statement win wouldn't have hurt. The, 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 that statement, uh, it's hard. It you struggle a lot against Oklahoma. It really hurts when you look back in time. So does so does everyone, Dylan. Yeah. Un- unfortunately, I don't think we can keep stalling because we've just got to get the show on the road, and we can't make this a twenty-five minute episode of us just rambling about our uh, random barbecue takes. Even though we could do it if we wanted to, we're definitely fully capable. Gentlemen, thank you guys so much for joining today. And it's always good to sit down and talk to you guys. Love love this group. Super proud of what, what, everything we're going. Daniel, go ahead and start the usual procedure and let everybody know where they can find you. Oh, well, well, uh, walk off. Denver Bryant, you know walk off single. Abby Smith scores. Auburn wins 2-1 and sweeps the Missouri Tigers. There you go. You Right here on the college loop. Get, get this SOB out as quick as possible. Daniel, tell everybody where they can find you. You can follow me on Twitter at Daniel J. Locke and find my written work for any Auburn student media outlet. There you go. Short, sweet, to the point. Don't forget the Opelika Observer and the Auburn Wire. Don't don't forget it. I'll plug it for you, my And man. the Auburn Daily. And the and Auburn. I can't believe I forgot the three most important. Can't, can't believe you. I'm here, Sitar. Add by here, Sitar on Twitter. Like you're reading a byline. If you want to check out my written work on the NFL draft and beyond, that is at the Auburn Daily. More of my podcasting work available on the Auburn Daily Show every Wednesday and Friday. Wednesday with Dylan Lark. Friday with Lindsey Crosby. Found out that if you're listening to this show the, uh, this t- Tuesday morning, I'll be on the Auburn Daily Show Tuesday afternoon with Lance Daw. Should be a very exciting week on that front. A lot of exciting stuff coming up over there. A lot of exciting stuff coming up here. If you're watching the YouTube version, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell, drop a comment. Is Holden Jarner the quarter quarterback for 2023? Is he in the conversation? If he's not, who is it? You want to transfer pro- prospect? Tell us who it is. Dylan, get us out of here, my man. All right, and I'm Dylan Lark at your boy the tank on Twitter. That is at Y A B O I the tank. And catch me on the Auburn Daily Show every Monday with Lance Stahl. We missed today's episode. Weather was not very kind to us in our uh, <laughs> driving schedules. And catch me on the Wednesday show with Harrison Tarr, where we're sure to talk about something Auburn related, hopefully. Uh, and you catch me on the College Loop, and all of us on the College Loop, really, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And follow us everywhere like Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, and social medias. You have us on YouTube, where you can like, comment, and subscribe below Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. But sadly, Tarr. I'm so sorry, man. We don't have a MySpace quite yet, man. No MySpace. Before we get out of here, I did want to go ahead and tell everybody just really quickly, Dan, uh, D- Daniel and Dylan, we are sending our thoughts and prayers to everybody affected by the severe weather uh, in Southeast Alabama and across the Southeast. Um, if uh, pl- Please make sure everybody stays safe, hug your, hug your, hug your loved ones, and, and we are praying for all of you guys and your, you continue to be in our thoughts. I just want to throw that out there real quick. Yeah.